Hi, this is Alex and welcome to Package Main, the channel about Go, but not only. Today we are going to talk about error handling in Go and some of its best practices. Proper error handling is an essential part of, of a solid code. Error handling in Go has been a topic for hot discussions a lot due to its unconventional approach where an error is just a value that a function may return when something unexpected has happened. As you see, it's very different from other languages where we have try, catch, blocks, exceptions. I personally like this error handling. It reminds me that I have to take care of every single part of my code where an error may occur. In Go, there is a built-in type error with a zero value as nil. So in order to check an error, we basically need to check the value that is not equal to nil. Uh, the code could be therefore a little bit verbose and the errors package doesn't provide much functionality. So yeah, let's review some of the best practices and review the errors package or other packages that I can that I'll show you here that may be useful as well. First of all, let's review the built-in errors package. It basically has two main functions to create an error with a text message that would be errors.new or use an fmt package, so fmt.errorf. So let's write some basic code, we'll produce some errors, handle them, etc. and see what we can learn from it. So I'll write some simple function to process a file and um, yeah, it will probably throw up some errors so we can handle them. Let's, for example, do something with files, uh, we will send a path to the file there and this function will return an error, which we'll need to check later. And let's probably return multiple types of errors here. So for example, using errors.new, we can check maybe if um, the string, I'm sorry, for example, if path is empty, then we can return Pass is empty, right? Then we can actually try to open the file itself, which will give us a possibility of having an error here. So we use OS package open path and if error not nil, we can basically just return it. Uh, we won't do much here with an error. And then maybe let's try to use fmt.errorf. Um, here we can do, maybe let's check the file name. So if file name not equal something like expected name, then return fmt.errorf um, file name. Well, let's say unexpected file name. And yeah, pass the file name. Otherwise, there is no error, so everything is good, and we just return nil. All right, in our function may then we can call this process file function and see how we can handle these errors. So we will save it into error variable, so process file, maybe some unexisting file name. As you can see, there could be multiple types of errors returned from our process file function. This could be just a text error, could be error from OS package, could be some formatted error. There are multiple ways of checking the type of the error. Um, the first one I want to show you is the Sentinel error check that basically comparing your error to the constant from the package. And I know that in OS, for example, that, that could be variable error not exist, so I can check if error equal then do something, otherwise uh, do something else. This is actually a not recommended approach because um, in this case you have to export all your error constants as well and sometimes it's not that flexible. The other option is actually to check the error type, which I can actually use here because I know that OS open will re return some specific error type in case of like for example the file is not found um, so yeah first of all let's check actually if error is not nil um, 
and um, for example just return here otherwise we say all good and here we can check basically the error type error type is basically the any type in go that implements the error interface which is very easy to implement just an error fu function to implement um, so we can use switch construct to to check the error type and um, let's check the case if it's os path error so that's a specific type of error which will be returned in case the file is not found for example so yeah in this case we can let's let's print some message and also print the original error so let's say file not found um, and um, error as well um, otherwise if it's not OS path error then we can say um, unknown error cool let's see let's run this code and see if it works All right, so we have file not found. So the pass error actually was identified as an error, and then the original error, open foo, no such file or directory. Cool. The built-in errors package has some limitations. So let's review some of them. Um, it's very popular to wrap your error with some additional message. For example, you want to state what exactly happened in the function that produced this error. So very often in this case, instead of just returning an error, we want to add some additional message. Uh, and we can do this with, um, yeah, for example, fmt error f, and we say file not, oh, actually, we are not sure that file is valid. Like, unable to open a file and also add original message or original error. And now let's see what happens if we run this code. All right, so pretty much the same. Uh, we added this message and able to open a file, though now what happened? Now it's a known error. That's because, let's go back to the code. Before we were checking for os.pathError type, but now this type has been dropped here. Uh, we don't have access anymore to original type of the error. So what can we do to keep the original type of the error and have the stack trace of errors? There are actually multiple packages that can help you with that. They are backward compatible with built-in errors package. So if you just add them and your code was using uh, built-in errors packages, um, nothing will happen. Uh, and some of them are package slash errors or x slash x errors. Uh, they both have nice additional functions, so let's start with um, package slash errors. So that would be, and when I say package is pkg slash errors, as you can see, um, nothing is breaking here. So if I run my code, everything is still the same. So I don't have to change my code when I change in the package. Now let's see how we can overcome this error. So first of all, uh, instead of using fmt error f, we can actually use an errors.wrap method, which is very useful because it keeps the original error and then adds some additional context. Um, so that would be errors.wrap, where we pass original error and, and a message, enable to open a file. And now let's execute our code. All right, not much happened here. We still have unknown error, but now we can see this nice stack trace because usually you write multiple functions, you execute them one in another. Uh, there is a long stack trace of errors and we want to know exactly what happened where. Uh, but now let's also see how we can fix this thing and actually know what was the underlying error. The errors package that we use now has another nice function, which is goes which tells you the original underlying error type so what we can do here is um, instead of checking the direct type of the error we will use goes we'll pass error 
and we check its type. So this construct will actually tell us the type of the original error. And now let's run our code. All right, so now we actually can determine the original error. And now we type file not found. Working on distributed systems or any bigger projects, there may be additional needs for your error handling mechanism. I enjoyed using CockroachDB slash errors package, which is also compatible with built-in errors package or package slash errors, uh, but for, provides much more features. For example, stripping PII details from your error message logs, um, giving you sentry.io format, for example, also separating system messages from user hints, we can, which we can directly show to user, for example, in our API responses. Um, I'll leave the link to this repository down below. Overall, I enjoy the error handling in Go. Though it's quite verbose, it's very easy to understand and straightforward. Yeah, and if you have any other best practices that you use for error handling in your projects, in your code, yeah, please share them in the comments below. Hope it was interesting and helpful and see you later.